The iPad Pro, not the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of a video editing powerhouse. However, it is one. Spoilers for the whole video. After all of these months, does this still hold up as a video production powerhouse? Let's find out. That was harder than I wanted that to be. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I love the iPad Pro. This thing has been basically glued to me. Like this is now, it's basically a part of my body. You know, it just has been since it was released earlier this year. And we made a video earlier this year about how this could be your only video editing computer. And I wanted to do a follow-up to that because there's been some serious updates to the iPad Pro to some of the key software that we use, so let's get into it. First up, we have to set up everything because unfortunately you can use the iPad by itself, but it's just so much easier and a much better like editing experience if you have a few key accessories. And let's plug in all of the accessories right off the bat. Now, to be fair to the iPad and not to tax its processor recording the screen, we're gonna use a little device called the Atomos Ninja V and that's gonna be our screen recorder for this experiment. Now we do need to pair a few key accessories to take this from being just like a regular experience to like the full powerhouse experience. And we have an Apple Magic Keyboard and my favorite MX Master 3. And it's really these two devices that kick this up all, like so many notches are kicked up and that's what lets you really get the most out of this. See, look at that, mouse and keyboard support. One of the main issues that has not been resolved with the iPad is the file system is still kind of iffy. So we already pre-staged our footage that we're gonna use and we use the Samsung T7 to transfer that footage. You've seen me talk about this a lot. It is a great experience. So what we're gonna do, let's actually open up the program we use called LumaFusion. And I'm not sponsored by LumaFusion. I just talk about this all the time because it's such a fantastic, really the only video editing program that's worth it on the iPad. So we have the iMac accessories video. If you remember that video from a couple of weeks ago, I have all of the files from that video and we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna do what I call my rough cut edit where I grade and I edit all of the main stuff. We're gonna see how that experience works. We're gonna drop in some B-roll when we're done and then we'll render it and see how well it works. So let's, first off, we have to do the grading because this is shot in what's called log. Can you see that? It's gross. This is a log format, which means it's very flat. All the contrast and saturation is basically taking it out of it. One of the great things though, we can, we'll do an original, so we can change some of the basic stuff. We have one of the official LUTs from Lumix, which will let us use the V-log that we found on here, and we'll be able to actually grade it very well. And this monitor is not color calibrated, so forgive it because it looks not great. That's why you always use color calibrated monitors when you're gonna be doing real video work. So we've added the LUT, very easy. Let's add some contrast. Let's add, ooh. Let's add some, we're gonna, go, we're grading off of this monitor. We're grading off of the good monitor and we'll just live with what this looks like and we'll fix that uh, later if we need to. We'll add a little bit of saturation and just a scooch, scooch of brightness, maybe just a tad more contrast. And that I think looks Okay, so the grade looks pretty good. Let's test out the audio. Is the audio any good? Like I said, it comes with a keyboard and it comes with a mouse, but if you don't necessarily like that, if you don't necessarily like those offerings. Okay, I think the audio sounds pretty good, so we'll leave that alone. You can edit the audio per each track that you have up here. You can have multiple tracks um, of audio and video, uh, but we'll close this. We don't need that right now. So let's go to the beginning. And let's get to the editing. Record. One, two, three. You got to do the claps beforehand, right? Like, how do you uh, how do you expect to get anything done if you don't do the claps beforehand? Come over here. Let's listen. Wait, what video is this? What was it? The good news is the I. The good news is I screw up an awful lot, so you have to be prepared for that when you're editing. Is especially if you're me, chances are you'll make a mistake. Okay, so we got the beginning of the video. The good news is the iMac from 2020. The good news is the- Look how many times uh, Gary here messes up, which is, not, which is not terrible. Okay, so I wanna cut from that. I like having jump cuts sometimes to make it seem like what I'm saying is funnier than it you know, maybe actually is. Oh no, I mean, everything I say is always hilarious all of the time the title of this video again? Okay, so seriously, if you're gonna use the iMac, everything you need comes in the box. And just check this out, like this is 4K, 10-bit footage that a lot of computers would have problems editing, but this thing plays back. 
is an all-in-one. So smooth. Have you seen, in this whole video, go back, you can watch the whole thing over again, several times if you want to. <laughs> but check it out, there's no stutters. This thing scrubs super easy. And one of the big things that I was very excited about and one of the things that makes this even easier to edit on that used to kind of be a problem to edit on is you can now drag and select multiple things at once. You used to have to click and then click, like click, command, click. Man, this is so much easier than some other computers I've used recently. Okay, so we've got, that's the intro. And I think we'll be able to show what I'm talking about from the intro. We don't have to necessarily go through this whole thing. I Do I need to show you the same cuts over and over and over again? Probably not. So I think we've got the grade down. We've cut the intro. Let's do a refinement on the intro so you can see how I do my refine, my refinements, because it's not all just like, as you've seen, it's not all perfect right off the bat. So we'll let that start working. Let's add some, some of my normal flair to this that would make it a little funnier. So we need to zoom in a little bit on this one. So we need to do this frame, zoom in right about there. Okay. That's good. So now you can see we've, you know, we've made a comical like, what? What's going on? Need any accessories? Wait, what was the title of this video again? And that's what makes it like a lot of the touchscreen, you don't have to do everything with a keyboard and mouse. And one of the benefits of using the iPad with its touchscreen is you can get more precise sometimes than having to. Now, if I wanted to do this on my Windows machine or a MacBook, I couldn't get in there and make the changes like with my own hand. So I do like that you can do that straight from the screen of the iPad. So we've got this, let's do an in and an out so we can kind of show what I'm talking about right here. So we've got that set up. We do not want 30 seconds of it. Let's come down here, let's bring the end. Let's do about 10 seconds. We'll do 12. So here's 12 seconds. Let's bring you down here. We need to flip you upside down. We need to rotate you because you are currently upside down and we wanna make sure that you are right side up. Okay, whoop, 180. And then let's zoom in on this just a little bit so we can see the accessories. We don't necessarily need to see all that stuff. So back. The iMac, everything you need. Oh, so you just heard that audio, right? So we need to, we need to kill that track because we do not want this to have any sound. The iMac, everything you need comes in the box. And then we just do the same thing we did down there, but up here, we cut that, and we're gonna wanna go back to that in a second, because I like having cuts pretty regularly, especially as you've seen like on the intro here. Okay, we need to zoom in. Sometimes when I make like emphasis, you wanna bring it in just a little bit closer. So let's cut right there. We'll bring this back over to, sh to cover the cut, because sometimes if you have a jump cut that you don't wanna show, you just have the edit be a little bit over the lip there so that you don't actually see the cut because we're not gonna wanna see the jump cut coming back. We're just gonna assume that it was fixed. So let's do this again. Frame it over there, back. I really like that. I like that a lot. I wish I could do that on all my computers. Go. However, there are some additions that you could use to make your life a little bit easier or to make it like more high quality. Like there's always a way to- Okay, so now we're gonna do my like, I always have a zoom in, right? You always see me do the zoom in on these things. So user effects. So effects, we need a movement effect. We want a zoom in. So this should now... A computer. So what are those accessories and are they any good? Let's find out. There you go. Now we need, the last thing we're gonna do on this particular edit is we do need, I like a push. So where it, uh, it like pushes itself out of the way. We want this transition to be a, I like a push. So we will push, eh, let's say push, let's do push left. Normally I think we push right, but let's do let's do push left. Let's be crazy. You know, let's make things a little more exciting. There we go. What's up everyone? I'm that's close enough. That's close. That's about as close as you're gonna get for government work. So yeah, we've seen okay, the video editing still continues to be great. I like the updates to LumaFusion. You've seen how we can color grade, you've seen how we can do all the transitions, you've seen pretty much everything that you can do. The only thing that we haven't really seen is here. I'll show you that we could um, pull out the audio. Okay, so now that green track is the audio and we could do like specific things 
to the audio if you wanted, if we wanted to. You can see they've got all sorts of like filters that you can put on, other audio effects. You can configure it to be stereo, to be mono. You can change the volume, you can pan it. You get a lot of really good options to also manage the audio. We're not gonna do that. I like getting my audio right in camera because it saves me a whole lot of work later. So we we could process the audio more. We are not gonna be doing that. I think our intro is pretty good. It's taken us 20 minutes to do so because the intro is the most important part of any video, right? So let's actually, let's do a quick render test. Let's see how long it would take to do this as a five minute video. If we were doing a five minute 4K 10 bit video, how long would that take? Cause that's kind of like, I consider that to be the standard amount when I want to see like for comparisons. Cause you guys through the magic of editing don't have to sit here for the whole thing. I have to sit here and watch this thing render, which is not spoilers. It's not fun. So let's export this. We'll do movie. We won't upload it to YouTube. 4K, we'll do 30 frames per second. Video quality ultra at 150 megabits per second. That's a lot. That's not what like, that's not normally what the videos are. Let's do, we'll do quality at 75. Trust me, I do not recommend doing ultra. Ultra is pretty, pretty intense. We'll keep the audio where it is. We will do MP4. Export duration, okay. Space needed 2.5 gigabytes, that sounds about right. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, can you all see the stopwatch? Stopwatch, ready? Oh, the, stop, the stopwatch is covered in light because of the light, hold on there, is that better? Okay, ready, get set, go. Man, that is flying, flying. What I consider to be a good render speed is faster than real time. And what I mean by that is you can see, we've only done 15 seconds of the render so far, but we've edited 30 seconds of the render. So it's about 10 seconds faster than real time. And that will expound as we go forward. I mean, that's fast. Look at, you can see how fast that is going, right? 4K 10-bit files, rendering to H.264, which is a highly compressed codec that computers do not like. And this thing, it's, so fast. I won't continue making you listen to me be amazed on this. Every time I render video on the iPad, I am blown away, but we'll, okay. Ready, get set, okay. And we've got like 10 seconds left, so even less than that. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, we're done. So that five minute video took two minutes and 48 seconds to render. That's wild, that's wild. Uh, so the, so the only, I only have two other machines in this house that would render either the same or faster than that. And that's the custom PC that I built that uses the RTX 2080 Super that has the NVIDIA NVENC encoders, which is lightning fast and way faster than this. Um, but it should as a desktop PC, right? My Razer Blade 15 base model with an RTX graphics card would probably do it faster, but this is faster than the MacBook Pro, the iMac, the iMac Pro, any of the Windows machines without a Turing NVIDIA graphics card. Like this is wild. It'll save you lots of time. I, I love it. I could make a whole video series on me just being blown away by how well the iPad Pro is for editing and rendering video. It's legitimately impressive. So to answer the question, can you still use the iPad Pro as your only video editing machine? Yes. If you do lots of simple stuff and you capture your footage correct in camera and you only do like minor color grade tweaks, absolutely the iPad could be your only video editing machine. It's, it's legit. Like this is a powerful, powerful machine that you can accessorize to make even easier. Now, if you do need, if you need a better file workflow or you need actual scopes like a waveform or vector scope to do your editing, then I would probably say stick with a regular computer. But again, if you capture everything in camera, this works totally fine, totally fine. And if you saw this video and you're like, Gary, okay, works for video editing. How's this iPad Pro holding up four months later? Well, good news, viewer. I've got a video right here that will explain all of that for you. It's awesome. You should watch it and click right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.